Good morning and welcome to Craft Memorial United Methodist Church's online message for this Sunday, July 31st, 2022. I'm so glad that you all joined me here this morning for this special message as we continue on our study of the spiritual disciplines. Uh, this morning I'll be reading to you from Mark 8 verses 31 through 38. And it says, Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and rebuked him. By tur uh, but turning and looking at the disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on the divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any of you want to be my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for the sake, uh, for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um, let us begin with a word of prayer. Uh, Almighty and gracious God, I pray that every word that I speak here this morning will bring you honor and glory, draw us closer to one another and closer to you. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So our scripture this morning starts with Jesus predicting his own death in verse 31. But if we go back to verse 29, we see Jesus talking to his disciples and asking them a very important question. Who do you say I am? Where Peter answers, you are the Messiah. This question must be at the center of our spiritual practices. Who do you say I am? Who is Jesus to us? And how does what we believe about Jesus shape and influence the way we live out these spiritual practices uh, that we've been studying over the past few weeks? Uh, we must believe that Jesus empowers us and that the power of the Holy Spirit is living in us and wants to speak to us. So if we believe that, then we will practice these practices with more vigor and more excitement. Um, so scripture tells us that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The purpose of the spiritual practices is freedom. And there's freedom in living out these spiritual practices in our day-to-day -day lives. There's freedom, there is freedom from greed, from self-indulgent, freedom to love unconditionally and to give generously just to name a few. Last week, we studied simplicity, where we learned through, the, through simple living, we are set free from the pull of the material world around us. And the freedom we experience is the ability to be generous, because we trust God to provide for our needs. We don't feel the need to hold so tightly to the possessions that we have. Um, and this week, we're looking at the practice of submission and service, which go together. Because first, we must submit to God in the ways of the kingdom before we can truly allow ourselves to be humble servants to our fellow man. And as we study the practice of submission this morning, we will see if we're able to live in submission to God, we are free from the need to always get our own way. A life lived in submission to Christ is a life lived for the good of others. Let me read that again. A life in submission to Christ is a life lived for the good of others. In submission, we are free to value others. Their dreams and their plans become important to us. We're able to love people unconditionally, and we have given up the right to demand that they return our love. It means you are free to obey Jesus' command to love our neighbor and pray for those who persecute you. 
<coughs> you come to realize that you can surrender your right to retaliate. And that is good for our youth to remember as they begin this school year. People are going to do and say things that are hurtful, things that will make you want to retaliate. And I know this because there was a lot of retaliation at Whitthorn last year. Unfortunately, there are going to be bullies in every school, and I'm sorry for that. But as we live by the example Jesus set for us, we, as we allow the Spirit of God to be our God, we are able to let go of our anger. We do not have to live an eye for an eye. We're able to let, uh, we're able to set that Christian example of love and forgiveness. We allow Jesus to fight our battles for us, and I assure you that you will be blessed if you do so. Our act of submission does not make us weak. In fact, it is a sign of strength and Christian maturity. We become the example of Christ's love in the world. The biblical understanding of submission is laid out in our scripture text this morning as Jesus tells the crowd, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Our human nature calls us to question these words, as it does many of the difficult teachings in Scripture. We are much more comfortable with words like self-actualization and self-fulfillment. We are not fans of this idea of self-denial. But what we want often goes against what is best for us and what would further the kingdom. The only way we will truly know ourselves and find fulfillment in life is by way of self-denial. Self-denial is the realization that we do not have to have our own way. Our happiness does not depend on getting what we want. And it's important to point out that self-denial does not come to us, um, does not come and then we lose our identity. As we deny ourselves, we lose who we are, our own identity. But it helps us to truly know and love ourselves and our fellow um, human beings. Jesus made the ability to love oneself a prerequisite in reaching out to others. Jesus tells us in Matthew 22, 39, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And you know what else submission and self-denial frees us from? Self-indulgence. I want you to think of what life would be like if you never put limits on yourself and the things that you want. If you never put limits on what you ate, what, how much shopping you did, how much drinking you do if you were a drinker. If you don't put limits on yourself, you are, um, of course, going to harm yourself. A modern Christians find it hard to read the great devotional masters because they use such lavish language of self-denial. Thomas Kempers wrote, I have no opinion to have no opinion of ourselves and to think always well and highly of others is a great wisdom and perfection. To save... Um, we uh, find these teachings difficult because we don't understand Jesus' teaching that the way to self-fulfillment is through self-denial. Mark 8.35 tells us to save one's life is to lose it, and to lose one's life for the sake of Christ is to save it. In his book, The Celebration of Discipline, Richard Foster talks about one of the most radical teachings of Jesus was his reversal of contemporary ideas of greatness. Leadership is found in becoming a servant. Power is discovered in submission. The main symbol of this radical servanthood is the cross. Philippians 2.8 tells us Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. But let, me but let us remember this Jesus not only died across life, but lived, not, not only died across death, but lived across life. The way of the cross was the way of a suffering servant, and it was essential to his ministry. Jesus lived across life in submission to all human beings. 
He rejected the power and position that was rightly his. Jesus shattered the customs of his day by taking women and children seriously. And once we begin to live in our lives in submission to God, the way of the kingdom, um, service is a natural outflowing. There are seven acts of submission in Richard Foster's book that I would like to mention this morning um, to help us understand this practice of submission. The first act of submission is we must submit to the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Next to scripture, we must be willing to hear, receive, and obey the word given to us. Third is to family. Each family mantra should be, let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. Philippians 2.4 Freely and graciously, family members should make allowances for each other. The primary deed of submission is in a family is to commit to listening to the other family members. The fourth act of submission is to our neighbor and those God puts in our path throughout the day. We live a life of simple goodness when we see the needs of others and we respond. We share our food, we babysit for a single mom, we mow a yard of an elderly person or somebody recovering from sur uh, surgery, we share our tools, we visit our neighbors during difficult times. Our fifth act of submission is to the church and the body of Christ. When we see a need, we need to ask ourselves, is this something I can do? We cannot do it all, but we can all do something and we should. Next, we should submit to the hurting and the outcast. Every culture has its widows and orphans, the helpless and undefended, those who need a voice and a hand up to survive. We are always called to look out for those. And lastly, we are to be in submission to our world. As we live in an interdependent international community, we can't live in isolation. And our environmental responsibilities or our lack thereof affects not only the people around the world, but it also affects generations to come. And as it stated earlier, submission leads to service. When we are in submission to God, we will be in of service to others. We will not have to get our way, and we will celebrate when our brothers and sisters in Christ achieve their goals, even if it prevents us from getting what we want. An example of this would be a, um, a co-worker that you love getting a promotion that you were both up for. You're able to celebrate with them and truly share their joy, even in the midst of your disappointment. And we will see the needs of others and we will respond by filling those needs if we have the ability. But to do specific acts of service is not the same as living the discipline of service. Just like there is more to the game of baseball than the rule book. Jesus modeled this practice of service most clearly as he washed the disciples' feet. It was an act of love and humility. And Jesus was clear. He washed their feet, and now they were to wash each other's feet. In other words, they were called to humble themselves and serve one another, just as Jesus had served them. And he taught them that a true leader is a servant to all those they lead <clears throat> and truly live out their spiritual practices of and to truly live out our spiritual practices of service we must look inwardly at our motives and seek to live out in humility and genuine care um, for others one one way to do this is hidden service Every person can cultivate acts of service that are generally unknown to others. Because if we do all of our service before others, we will become shallow people. Now let us look at some acts of service you may not think of. There is a ministry of small things. It, um, someone once said, great virtues are a rare occurrence. The ministry of small things is a daily service. Large tasks require great sacrifice for a moment, where small things require constant sacrifice. 
there is the service of guarding someone's reputation. Titus 3.2 tells us, speak evil of no one. There's the act of being served. When Jesus washed the disciples' feet, Peter um, refused. If Peter would have been the master, he would not have washed feet. But it is in this act of submission, but it is an act of submission to allow others to serve you. Some of us are really bad at that. Uh, we should be able to receive a service never feeling the need to repay it. I've heard a lot of people say, you know, don't steal my blessing. I'm trying to do something good for you. Just take it. And we should be able uh, to do that. There is a service of common courtesy. These are the practices uh, that have faded away over time. But acts of courtesy are so meaningful. At their core, they act and acknowledge others and affirm their worth. Things like uh, simply asking how you're doing, thank you letters, or returning an RSVP are all acts of service and courtesy. Next is the service of hospitality. Peter tells us in 1 Peter uh, 4, 9 to practice hospitality ungrudgingly to one another. Um, and Paul even makes it a requirement to be a bishop in second uh, in 1 Timothy 3, 2, and in Titus 1, 8. Sometimes we limit ourselves because we make hospitality too complicated. Just the opportunity to get together and share is hospitality. There is the service of bearing one another's burdens. Galatians 6, 2 tells us bear one another's burdens is to fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ is the law of love. And love is most perfectly lived out when we bear the burdens and sufferings of others and weep with them when they are sorrowful. And lastly, there is the service of sharing the word of life. It is said that those who walk the path of silence and solitude do so for others. We are called to share what we've heard in the presence of God. This is a wonderful gift. For no one person can hear all God has to say. God is speaking to me right now about growth and transformation. And that is why we're on this journey of studying the spiritual practices. As I believe God wants us all to be in a constant state of growth and transformation. And God has appointed these means of grace or spiritual practices to help us become all we can be. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And in closing today, I want to ask that this week you consider using a prayer that I've heard many faithful disciples pray at the beginning of each day, which helps them to live lives of submission and service. It says, Lord Jesus, as it would please you, bring me someone today whom I can serve. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.